Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Welcome to the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church of Jesus Christ. 8640 Snarbar Road, right here in Kansas City, Missouri, where our pastor is the Dr. Jesse Frazier and First Lady Shirley Frazier resides. Amen. Amen. We welcome you out there in, in radio land, uh, social media, and those that are here in the sanctuary. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Let's stand and give God a hand of a praise. For he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised upon this day. Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And while we're standing, we're just going to have a word of prayer. And then we're going to go right into our service. Amen. 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 And our mass choir, which is right behind me, uh, will be rendering the music. And we'll go on with God's program. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come, Lord, thanking you, O oh Lord, for all that you stored up on us. Our last night lying down and waking us up early this morning, Father. We thank you, Lord, for, for that upon this day. We thank you, Lord, for the activities of our limbs. Now, Father God, we ask, oh Lord, that you be in the midst of this service. We ask, oh Lord, that you look down upon all of those that are here right now, Lord, under the sound of my voice. Look down upon the ones that are on the way, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, give them a safe passage to the house of worship upon this morning. Father God, look down upon every church door and street ministries that's teaching and preaching thy word all over this land and country. Heavenly Father, we ask, oh Lord, that you look down upon those that are not able to attend church upon this day, Lord. Uh -huh. Heavenly Father, but we ask, oh Lord, that they may turn on their radios or television or whatever devices they have, Lord, that they may hear your word upon this morning. Uh -huh. Heavenly Father, we ask, oh Lord, that you would please, sir, be with our pastor and first lady. Continue, Lord, to give them the downtime that they need. Yeah. Now, Father God, we ask, oh Lord, that you look down upon the music ministry that will be rendering the music upon this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, bind their voices, Heavenly Father, that they may sing Isaiah's songs, Heavenly Father. Father God, then we ask, oh Lord, that you look down upon this waiting congregation. Look down upon your preached word upon today, Heavenly Father. Undergird the man of God that will be preaching the word, Heavenly Father. We ask, oh Lord, that you would touch him, that some son of man, woman, boy, or girl, may come running, crying, asking, what shall I do to be saved? Look down upon the sick and shut in, here, there, and elsewhere, Heavenly Father. Now, Father God, we pray, Heavenly Father, mightily that you be in the furtherance of this service. Yeah. Father God, we ask, Lord, that you would watch over us, Lord, as only you can. Now, Father God, just be with us as our prayer. Yeah. We ask right now in your darling son, Jesus Christ, right now, and I do pray, and I'm calling it done. Amen, amen, amen. amen, and amen. May God be the glory.
Now let us all to the old. Let us all to the old. Now let us all back to the old. And we now let us all to the old. Let us all to the old. Now let us all back to the old. And we now preach a preach, preach in the old. Now preach a preach, preach in the old. Now preach a preach, preach in the old. And we I want to go down To the river and the old I want to go down To the river and the old I want to go down To the river and the old Sons and buried in the water, coming up fire, wheel and wheel. I want to go down to the river and the old. I want to go down. To the river and the old, I wanna go down. To the river and the old, see sons and daughters, sons and 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 buried in the buried. Buried in the buried, buried in the buried, buried in the buried, coming up, 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 nobody, nobody. Nobody, 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 nobody. Fire, 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 fire. Wheel, wheel. Wheel, 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 sons and sons and sons and buried in the buried in buried in buried in coming up, coming up. Coming up, coming up, nobody, 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 fire, 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 wheel, 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 wheel. Wheel, 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 and wheel. I'm gonna stay 
I'm going to stay. Will you stay? 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 Oh, in the service, 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 and we'll wonderful selection. Amen. Uh, before we go any further, we're going to uh, acknowledge all of the June birthdays. Anybody here that has a June birthday? We know the best month is uh, July. Se July. <laughs> September. July. September. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, we ain't, we're not at uh, September yet. We're in June. So all of June birthday, would you please stand? And if you're out there on social media, we acknowledge you as well. Amen. We will sing happy birthday to our June birthdays. Amen. Amen. Ready, ready? <laughs> happy birthday. We at the hour of um, the preaching of the gospel. Amen? Amen. If man may be saved, it's through the preaching of the gospel. Amen. And we have my brother who I don't mind introducing. Um, he don't mind preaching the gospel. Um, we, we go a lot of places and he's there. If he's not supporting me, he's preaching. Amen? Amen. This man needs no introduction. He is associate minister here at the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church of Jesus Christ. None other than Minister Lawrence Smith, Jr. Amen? Amen. Amen. And before he shall preach, our choir will be rendering the hymn of concentration for him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to step out the way and let this wonderful choir give us a selection. And the next voice you hear from this podium will be that of Minister Lawrence Smith, Jr. Amen? Amen. Let's raise our right hand and say, Preach! Preach! Preacher! Preach! Preach! Sending on the promises of Jesus, 
And I believe he'll do just what he said. No more doubts or disbelief causing my faith to decrease. All the more I'll take him at his word I'll trust and never doubt I'll stand upon his promises For in the time of trouble He will bring me out
give God a hand of praise for our choir again. Thank you, choir. Thank you, uh, Sister Vonda, for uh, being at the helm of the song. And thank you for um, your willingness to, um, to do the, the hymn of consecration. Um, I just thank God, Heaven, for what he is doing, what he has already done. I um, I do have one announcement to make before uh, we get started. One is that uh, next week, Pastor will be teaching on the life of Joseph. I am making this announcement because there will be dun, 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 a quiz. There will be a quiz. Also, young people are not exempt. Tomorrow, next Sunday is second Sunday. So our young people will, will be in the sanctuary. So they should also be prepared for the dun, 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 the quiz. Now listen, I talked to our pastor, and uh, I said, hey, you want me to you know, let him know where to go? And he said, nope. <laughs> the only thing I am to relate to you is that pastor will be talking about the life of Joseph, and there will be a quiz. Amen. Thank you so much for for your attention to the announcement. And um, just a couple of things I just want to say because I'm silly. Uh, I didn't see them actually on the, on the Facebook, but uh, I, put, I, I put this on this particular suit on purpose because uh, my brother Rob, who I think we should continue to pray for, him and, uh, and Angel, is that um, one day he came in the church and I was wearing this particular suit and he goes, hey, are you preaching? I said, no. He said, I noticed that uh, every time you preach, you're wearing that suit. <laughs> so from then on, I just kind of referred it to, uh, to my preaching suit. But I, I want him to know and that I'm, I, wore, I wore it specifically on purpose today so, uh, because I had him on my mind. Trevor asked me what I was wearing. I said, my preaching suit. She knew what I was talking about. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and go into the word of God. Uh, we appreciate the fact that he has given us um, something that we can look into so that we may be able to observe his heart and his mind. We will be in the book of 1 uh, Corinthians, the first chapter I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians. I wonder if I can find it. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. The uh, 20th verse. And while you are looking, I want to, as I always do, because I recognize that God has done something for me. And that is he has given me a friend. And um, she is much more than a friend. She is the mother of the children that God gave us. Um, she is uh, my best friend. And uh, sorry, Odell. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, just appreciate her for everything that, that God has done for me. So I just want to introduce to some and present to others. The reason why I'm doing this, uh, Mrs. Treva Smith, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. Let us bow. Lord, we just thank you for, um, for allowing us to come together, Lord, to be able to 
read your word and to be able to to see what it is that you would have for us in the word those things that we may be able to avoid or grab a hold to uh, certainly we can be encouraged by lord god and we just ask heavenly father that as we delve into your word today that you would give us what it is that we need lord i ask that you would make up the ground that i've fallen short in in studies and in prayer uh, so that your people, Lord, would be able to get only that which you have for them, Lord. Touch all of our hearts so that we may be able to practically apply that which you would have for us and that we may be brighter lights in this world. We thank you and we appreciate you. In, the, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have a timer on today, so I only intend to be in front of you for a certain amount of time. Second Corinthians one twenty says this. I'm reading in the New, Tip, New King James Version. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Amen. Uh, what I'd like to do real quickly is just to read it again because I, I, I want to kind of look at this and kind of break this apart a little bit so that we can so that I can and we can get as much as we can out of this passage of scripture I will talk about context for for those of of you who are who are really uh stoic about it and I am also because I want to preach the word as 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 it is given us but the first thing uh, uh in the in the passage of scripture is we say uh and we'll be talking about uh what we can hang our thought on to this message to this message is I said what I said. Now, uh, much of what we uh, do is if you've heard, ever heard that before, it's generally in a in a context of where somebody has said something that may have been potentially offensive or certainly has gotten your attention. And when somebody said has said something, then they say, I said what I said. It means that they're unapologetic about it. You know, I said what I said, and I'm just going to lay it right here and take it how, how you how you will. But listen, uh, when we look at this passage of scripture and we see God or we see that all the promise of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. What we can understand is that God said what he said, and he don't have to be apologetic about it simply because of this. He's God. So the three points I want to talk about is when we talk about this message, I said what I said, we're going to talk about who said it. We're going to talk about who is listening. And then we're going to talk a little about, a bit about these promises of God. First of all, who said it? For the promises of God, and I want to pause because we have to understand that I want to hang it right here. See, the, the weight of what is Said in this case, these promises are what uh, the weight of what anything is said is dependent on the authority of the one behind the statement. There was a commercial a long time ago, uh, certainly be I think before any of our youth were even born, but there was a commercial a long time ago, um, or an advertisement for E.F. Hutton. And in that, in that uh, advertisement, you'll see all this busy work going on, and it's always two people, generally two people, they're talking, and they're talking stocks, and they're talking the stock market. And one person might say, well, yeah, my broker thinks that maybe this might be a good time to start investing in this particular stock. And in all the busy work, in the scene, and all this stuff is going on, maybe they're in a restaurant, and people are talking, and you hear all these clinking of silverware and stuff like that, and the other person will say, well, my broker is E.F. Hutton. And E.F. Hutton says, and all of a sudden, everything goes quiet. And everybody in the scene, everybody's dining or whatever they're doing, they're leaning in like this. And then over the, you hear this uh, narration that says, when E.F. Hutton talks. <laughs> Some of y'all heard it. People listen. Listen, what I want us to do is have the mindset of, of that same mindset, not about E.F. Hutton, obviously. And E.F. Hutton obviously has built some type of reputation in, 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 the, in the broker and the stock market and such that 
they're able to say that they are imply that E.F. Hutton has been so successful or has been able to, to uh, have clients tell so successful that you want to hear what E.F. Hutton says. Well, I want to try to transpose that mindset as it relates to God. When God makes a promise, when he says something, it behooves all of us to listen. But maybe, maybe we have kind of forgotten or kind of taken for granted of who God is. So I want to kind of remind us. All the way over in Genesis 1-1. says, in the beginning. God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That statement right there tells us something. Before there was anything that ever existed, there was God. When there was nothing at all, there was God. And that speaks of his pre-existence. He created the heavens and the earth. In other words, he created the entire universe. Notice the word heavens, plural. He had created the entire universe and everything in it. Now, listen, because that which is created can never be greater than the creator, this talks about God's omnipotence. When someone sits down and they build, a, uh, say, a Lego block, maybe a, a, my son and his mother worked on this, this Jeep and it's so many hundreds of pieces and they worked for so long and they created this Jeep. Beautiful model made of Legos. That Jeep, which they have put together, that Jeep will never be greater than either my son or his mom. They put it together. That Jeep will never be as smart as them. That Jeep will never be able to make the wise decisions that they might make. That Jeep will never be able to talk. That Jeep will never be able to tell. Listen, the same rule applies when, it talk, when we talk about the universe, the entirety of the universe, and everything in it in God. And since the, everything that God has created can never be greater than the creator, then that tells us of God's omnipotence. So already we know that this God is preexistent and this God is omnipotent. In Genesis 1, 14 through 8, God creates the sun, the moon and stars for signs, for seasons, for days and years. Now, since God is the creator of time, then that means he must exist outside of time. Neither is he limited to it. In Isaiah 46, 9, 10, he says that he is the only one of his kind. And because he has declared the end from the beginning, it points to his eternality. And in uh, 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 verse 9 details whether that time is, I'm sorry, Psalms 139, 7, 16 declares that whether in heaven or in hell, he is there. Whether in, uh, in, uh, 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 in verse 9, it details whether in time or in space, he is there. He is there. He says darkness is like light to him. Verse 11 and 12 in, in 139 tells us that he is omnipresent. So when this all powerful, eternal, everywhere at the same time, God makes a declaration to act, given his divine nature, we ought to give attention, right? Because when God talks, Galaxies form. When God talks, planets and solar systems show up. When God talks, light comes to be. When God talks, planets appear. When God talks, plants appear. When he talks, animals come to be. You and I become living souls. When God speaks, people show up. People with freckles, dark-skinned folk. Like sense folk, living souls, larynxes are, are structured in such a way that some of them can sing to the heavens and, and tear the house down. But who is listening? I, I don't want to, I want to really, in this message, I want to major on encouragement. That's, that's really my purpose here. 
So what I want to do here is I want to talk of this. I want to be a little bit transparent and I want to peel out some illustrations uh, in, in my life before getting back to the text. See, sometimes, some time ago, God spoke and I kind of listened. He said, go back to school full time. This would have been difficult to do time wise because I had a full time job. And sometimes that full time job uh, uh, had me working 12 and 13 hours a day. Tree was actually working two positions. They were both from home, and one of them started to become more and more prosperous. So she said to me, if I'm able to make the amount of money we're both making, you can come off your job and go to school full time. Now, before I, before I keep going, I want, to, I, want, I want you to see, immediately see the difference here. God said, go to school full time. What we said was, when we are in the right financial situations, we're going to go to school full time. I'm going to go to school full time. So, well, Treva hit that income mark. And I left my job and enrolled in school. Then, less than two months later, Treva lost one of the contracts and our household income was split in half. I began to pray saying, Lord, you said be anxious for nothing, so... Uh, I'm coming to you. I just don't know what to do. Was I wrong? Did I leave the job too soon? And the only thing that came back was this. I said what I said. I, I was like, okay, then school is it. I saw an opportunity for a part-time job. You could set your own hours, work where you want. And I thought to myself, this is perfect. I can help out a little bit in the shortfall, in the in income, the financial shortfall in my house, and it won't interfere with my going to school. Pause here. God said, go to school full time. I said, I'll split my time up before, between work and school in order to go to school full time. Then the shifts I, I, I wanted to work, they started to become unavailable. The amount of money necessary available to keep us from to, from staying afloat, or it kept us from staying afloat, and the bills started to pile up, and they continued to pile up. And finally, when we we became when it became painfully evident there was nothing we could do to help the situation, and all we could do was pray. All that financial stuff went away. And while I was sitting at my desk absolutely dumbfounded about what just happened, God reminded me, I said what I said, go to school full time. And what God was doing is he was both me and Treva, he was teaching us something. See, we thought we were in the will of God and we were praising him when Treva hit that income mark to where I could come off from school. But see, we weren't there yet. What God was saying was, you need to trust me. God wasn't saying that you needed to trust me and then have a safety net over here. God didn't say, I'm going to tell you this and then I'm going to set you about accomplishing my goal. God said, I am going to do this because you are to do this. My, my specific instruction was to go to school full time. My instruction was not to go to stool, school, get a job, go to school, keep my job, wait until you both had, think you had enough money to, to stack up so you, you can go to school. God's instruction was go to school full time. I said what I said. There's more blessing in that situation. Some of you guys already know that I didn't even have to pay all my tuition when I went. Because God said what he said. He was teaching us to trust him implicitly without having to rely on ourselves. And see, sometimes you, 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 we miss this or I miss this. That same God who spoke the universe into being, who spoke into my heart, and he, he allowed me to come back to, to him, spoke to this wretched man again, and he said something specific. And, you know, I find that we sometimes fall into practicing a religion in which God exists to do something for us 
when his will is to work something out in us. We don't trust him to get it done when we operate as if God is working for us and not and not in us. We want him to get it done. But a guy whose word does not come back void and accomplish. He's a guy whose word doesn't come back void, but accomplishes that which he pleases. Also reminds us of the rest of Isaiah 46, 10. My counsel shall stand and I will do my purpose. His word is unchangeable. And his word is sure. When we are without direction, he knows exactly where to go. And speaking of his word, back to the verse, 2 Corinthians 1.20. And all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Who is him? When we go back into the previous verse, we see that Paul says, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. So we find that when he goes on to say, For all the promises of God in him, that him is in Jesus Christ. And I want to give a bit of context here, because at one time, Paul's intention was to go to Corinth while traveling to Macedonia, and then when he left Macedonia, he intended to go back to Corinth again. But for whatever reason, he didn't make it. So because of that, false teachers within the church quickly took advantage of this and tried to discredit Paul, calling him fickle. Somebody who vacillates, flip-flops in between his decision-making. But Paul makes a very important distinction in his asking a rhetorical question in 17 and what he says about Christ in verse 20. In verse 17, he says, therefore, when I plan when I was planning this, that I do it lightly. He says, are things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh that with me there should be yes, yes and no, no. And what he's saying is, listen, am I when I did this, do you call do you think me fickle? Do I make this plan? And this is where I saw this distinction. Do I make plans according to the flesh so that they are fickle, so they flip-flop between yes and no? That's That's the rhetorical question. And then he says in verse 20, he says in verse 20 that for all the promises of God are in him, in Christ, yes or yea and amen. So he makes these two distinctions. One is in the flesh, we have a tendency to flip-flop. 20 years ago, there were things that are, are, are there were things that we did not, we as a society would, would not accept. Now it's celebrated. There are things 20 years ago that we would do, and now we look down upon. Because the according to the flesh, we're flip-flopping. It's cool now. Listen, we as a country, we talk about doing that which is moral. We don't do that which is ethical. They try to, they try to interchange the two words, morality and, and ethics. They're not the same. But in essence, what I'm saying is this. People aren't doing what's moral. They're not doing what's ethical. They're doing what's popular. So 20 years from now, what people are frowning on today, they'll be celebrating. 20 years from now, what people are, are, are celebrating today, they may be frowning upon. They might be trying to hide it. They may not be doing it. They might be trying to cancel somebody for it. And that's what we have to remember because when we're talking about it, and this is speaking parenthetically now, is that when people are being canceled for People, what people are finding on social media because somebody said something 12, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, it was because there was time was different because this world or this society was, is operating according to the flesh. So what was, what was okay to say 25, 30 years ago is not okay now. And people are trying to nail people to the wall for what they said uh, when they said something that was acceptable then. But that's the flesh. The distinction is this. In Christ, 
God is who he is. Christ is who he is. We talked about God, but when we jumped over to John 1, John 1 says this. Starts just like Genesis. In the beginning. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now, here's the thing. When we jump down to verse 14, we see a little bit more information about this word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. What we find is this Jesus. We find a few different details. Number one, Jesus is pre-incarnate. Just like God, he's pre-existing, just like God is. Well, we find that, that he has the same characters, characteristics and nature as God. They're the same. What we find is that he was right there. When God said, let there be, the word said, I got you. So we find that this Jesus is the same as this God. And when 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 Paul was being talked about, what he helped to understand is, listen, I'm not fickle because I represent somebody. I represent Jesus. I represent Jesus Christ. And if I am a Christ follower and he is not fickle and he is who he says he is, then I'm not going to be fickle. And this is the thing that we have to understand because what we see when we back up, we see for all the promises of God. All the promises of God. From Genesis 1-1 to the book of Revelations. All the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. That's why it's in him, yes. And an absolute affirmation. And amen. So be it. So what I want to point out is... is some scriptures that God has promised that we can grab a hold of. Now, listen, there are some things that we have a tendency that to, to uh, grab a hold of as promises in the Old Testament that, honestly, they weren't for us. But that doesn't mean that God has left us out. He has done something for us. He is doing something for us. And he will do for us something for us according to his promises. Listen, if you are in a place where you're worrying about stuff, if you were in a place like me where I was like, I, I don't know what's going to happen. First of all, we need to check ourselves. Are we actually in line? Are we, are, we, are we walking in a place where we are allowing God to work something out in us? Listen, I'm a man. I'm a human being just like you. And sometimes when things aren't going the right way, sometimes my response ain't as it should be. But I want to give you some practical application. When things are happening, you're going through some stuff. And don't blame me. I, mean, I actually took it from, the, from a guy by the name of Michael Jr. He's a comedian. He wrote this awesome book. Uh, funny how life works. And it's, I don't know if it's in the book. I haven't finished it, but he, I heard him say on the podcast this. When something irritates you, especially in relationships, especially in husband and wife relationships, when something irritates you, lean into it. And what I mean is, instead of be getting all mad and backing up and being, being upset about it, lean into it. And ask yourself, why is this upsetting me? Because listen, there was a promise made in the book of Philippians, and it was more than, than a promise than a, a statement of fact. Because we are sure that he who had begun a good work in us shall perform it, into the day of Jesus Christ. You may have just stumbled on the moment and his Jesus has decided he's going to work on you a little bit. So lean into that thing. What is it that needs to be worked on? Why is this irritating me so much? Do I need a little bit more patience? Is there something that's, that's upsetting me because I'm all about me right now and not about God? What is it that God is trying to work out in me right now? Lean into that thing. 
Here are some promises. First promise, when we are in a place where we just don't know what's gonna, what we're going to do, I don't know what's going to come next. What do I need to do? How do I get rid of this thing? Or what do I do? And Jesus uh, says in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Here's the promise. All these things will be added unto you. I'm not talking about material things. I'm not talking about Lexus or Benzes or, or homes. What I'm talking about is your basic needs. When you, when you seek the kingdom of God first, you know what I didn't do? I didn't seek the kingdom of God first. What I did was look, I looked at my resources and said, what do I have? What did I have in my power that I need to bring to this thing so we can, so we can, go, so we can go ahead and help God out? Seek ye first. First John 1 John 1.9, I like this, and I, I pray that you, you do too. <laughs> because what it does, it allows us to be cleansed. Every once in a while, maybe it's just me, I'm just, I can just say this about me. Sometimes I get stuff wrong. Sometimes I get stuff real wrong. First John 1 John 1.9 helps me out. It says that we confess our sins. Here's the promise. He is faithful and just. We know faithful. We love faithful. Faithful means that consistently, every single time, he's going to be where he said he's going to be. He's going to do what he says he's going to do. What I love is just. Because it speaks right into what we're talking about today. Because the same God over in Genesis 1-1 <laughs> is the same God over in June 5th, 2022. That same God who has promised, uh, uh, who has promised uh, deliverance for his people in, in Israel has promised those same things. Those same, that same God who has said, I will, I will save you from your sin. And that's what this is. I will save you. From your sins, from the ultimate consequence from your sin, is saying this today. If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just. He is in line with his character. He is in line with who he is. All those things that we talked about earlier. Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Throwing it away. It's like having a conversation, Lord, I'm so sorry that I lied, or I'm so sorry that I failed to do this, or I'm so sorry that I hurt this person. And he says, what are you talking about? That's what forgiveness looks like. Listen, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean no consequence for your stuff. Believe me, I know. What it does mean that, that he ain't, it's not going to be hanging over your hell, head. When people say, remember what you... Remember what you did back in, in 2000 and 2000 and 2001? Yes, God don't. Because what he's done, he has traded my unrighteousness for his righteousness. What he's done is he's traded my stain, my red sin sick stain for his white wool of righteousness and cleanliness cleanliness from all, 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 all from 2012, all from 1925, all from 1987, all from 2064, all from 3016, all unrighteousness. It doesn't run out. It doesn't run dry. All unrighteous. Let me keep going. I got some more promises for you. He gives peace that passes all understanding. It can't be measured. We can't, we can't, we can't see it and we can't decide it that we're going to see what, how much of peace it is. It passes all of our understanding. Me, me, when you're getting your education and you don't know how you're going to uh, uh, get this 
get this degree and you don't know how to you know, accomplish your goals and you got all these boys that you have to raise and you got other people talking about you saying you can't do it. You got other people saying you don't have the intellectually capacity to get things done. God comes through. What you do is you take those anxiety, give them to God. <laughs> Pray about it. And then he gives you peace that passes all the study. He does, he does things even greater than that. He gives you ability to do what you that do what you it is that you want him to do or what he has called you to do. Always remember we are working at his and his purposes. Paul says he will never leave you, and the Old Testament says the same, nor forsake you. Even in those times when you're praying and you don't feel anything, keep praying. Because guess what? Our religion, our relationship, thank God. It's not based on how we feel about the relationship. Our relationship is based on what God said. And when God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, he is saying, I said what I said. If I said I will never leave you, I will never leave you. If he says I won't forsake you, I won't forsake you. But I don't feel like it, okay? I will never leave you. But I don't hear you, okay? I will never leave you. But I'm in this spot right now, okay? I will never forsake you. But something, this thing is happening right now. I don't know what I'm going to do from, from, from day one to day two. I will never forsake you. I said what I said. His unfailing love, Isaiah 54, 10 says, his unfailing love won't be shaken or his covenant of peace removed. Again, that peace that passes all understanding. Can't nobody trip God up. Can't nobody, can't, can't nobody uh, uh, blindside him. He can't be attacked from behind. And, and, and just in case you feel like your problems might be uh, as big as God, go back to Genesis 1. Go to Romans 8.28. You say, you know what problem? Not only did God create you, but ultimately, he might just be creating you so that it might be for my good. So we don't, we don't, we don't talk to our problem and say, come on, problem. We talk to God and say, come on, God. A lot of times, like I said, because, because the onus of our relationship, our religion with God sometimes is on us, that means that we're making ourselves responsible for our own condition. That's not how God intended for our relationship to be. As a matter of fact, and it's, I've, I've said it over and over again, over in Isaiah, he's doing it for his purpose. In the, in the scripture we just read in 2 Corinthians 1, he's doing it for his glory. You know what I've, I just figured out, and I am done. I'm closing my Bible. What I figured out, what I thought about when I was studying... I did in quotation marks. I'm sorry, I was. But I, I was, I'll just say, I won't say any more than this, but it was a battle going on. But what I was studying last night, there was something I realized that God never said that ultimately the reason he does what he does is for our pleasure or for our was so convenience. God never says that. Now, what it is that we're really pulled along toward his purpose because he saves us. He's reconciled himself for us. He gives us peace that passes all this time. He gave us all these promises. But ultimately, it's for his glory. My second application I want to suggest to you is this. And, and believe me, guys, it helps. It helps so much. Think about somebody else. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 tells us to do that. And then it goes through this whole diatribe of what Christ did, what that looks like, about having a mind of, of humility. Listen, even when you are being upset about something in your circumstances, be hum humble about it. So when you are starting to become uh, uh, just kind of out of sorts because of what's going on around you, pray for somebody else. 
You want to know? You want you want you want somebody to pray for? There have been 54 mass shootings in the United States in the last month. That ain't even a surprise report. Over the past weekend, there was another 12. You want somebody to pray for? Pray for those families. You want somebody to pray for? Pray for those who are now, because now we have the monkeypox going around. And people are, are trying to say that, that, that the disease is being confined to a certain group of people. Listen, listen, listen. Those certain group, go, group of people don't keep to themselves. And it may, it may certainly just be a hyperbole in the first place. Pray for those people who are, 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 are successful in their families to the monkeypox. You want to pray for some folks? Pray for those who have been victims of gun violence in the past year. And then look at yourself and say, you know what? God has blessed me. Yeah. Man, I promise you, I thought the world was going to end when I failed a class in school. I thought the world was going to end when I got fired from a job. I thought the world was going to end when I looked at my, my, st my stats and said, whoa, that is way below. Something's going to happen. And you know what? It has never been, number one, it's never been as bad as I conceived it to be. Because you know what? That was back to that I thing. That was me handling what was going on around six. Number two is that God has never left me. And he's never forsaken me. And what, what encourages me is, is, is this. That's exactly what he said. God bless you. God keep you. At this time, what we would like to do is I'm speaking to those who have never asked Jesus Christ to come into their hearts. The great thing about uh, being a part of the family of God is not only has God become involved in the salvation of man, not only was Jesus become involved in the salvation of man, but the Holy Spirit has become involved in the salvation of man. When we look even further in that second book of, of Corinthians, we see that uh, God gave the Holy Spirit as earnest in the hearts of men. What that means is that God promises that he's coming back for you and I. That God has claimed ownership of our souls. God has said that our bodies belong to him. But the only way that we can be part of this family is by saying yes to him. Understanding this, that God loved us so much that he did something. The scripture says over in the book of Romans that God demonstrated his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. John 3, 6, 16, we may know it, but sometimes we don't, do, we don't, tear, we don't tear that thing apart. We don't disseminate it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever shall believe in him his only begotten son shall not perish but have everlasting life not only is there a promise there but there's implication yeah. the implication is this if you don't have the only begotten son you will perish and i'm not trying to scare anybody i'm speaking the truth see what i'm doing is presenting to you good news but if you don't know that there's bad news that good news may not mean anything to you so if you have a tug in your heart and you believe or that it is time for you to come to Jesus or come back to Jesus, now is the time to do so. I'm asking all saints praying right now. I'm asking all saints praying right now. If you want to say, if you never said yes to Jesus Christ and you want to have him come and live into, in your heart, he will literally come and live. the Holy Spirit will come and reside in you. Just lift up your hand if you're here in this place. If you're over social media, just let us know. I want to give my life to Christ. And I believe the last time there might be uh, contact information for you as well. I don't see any hands raised. Secondly, I want to say this. If you want to join uh, Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church. Th that's what the chairs up here for. We're asking that you will come at this time. If you don't have a church, if you do not have a church home, and you want to make your home here at Ebenezer, we're asking that you would come now. If you're over on social media, let us know. 
The thing about joining a church is n nobody really has to be voted on. The fact of the matter is Jesus accepts you just as you are. You don't have to get right first. You don't have to, you don't have to buy a suit. I said, this is just my preaching suit. When I'm not preaching, I got something else. So he accepts you exactly as you are. Amen. No one has come, yet there is room. Amen. 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 Thank you. Guys. All right. Actually, I had two announcements. I knew there was another one. Thank you, Dexter. Um, there will be communion will be next sun next Sunday. Obviously we didn't have it today because pastor is not here. We will have communion next Sunday. So, you know, preachers, deacons, make sure you're wearing the proper attire. And, um, again, we pastors should be back. Pray for, for him and his wife and sister Jackie and all those that are traveling with him. Pray for traveling grace, uh, for them. And, um, I want to remind everybody, remember to study the life of Joseph. Study. I see some, I see some younger people in, a, in the congregation study. Can I ask you a question? Or can I ask you a favor? Don't not come to church the next week. <laughs> if it's your intention to be here, be here. We, we love, there are people here that I haven't seen in a while, and I, it's not on them. It's just that I, I miss their faces, right. you know? Um, you know, I, I saw the Thomases, and, you know, I, I, I haven't seen them in a while, you know? One of them, my roomie, uh, I, I miss those guys. I miss a lot of you guys. Uh, I miss a lot of you guys, and I'm glad to see that the, that the, the uh, sanctuary is filling up again. So I, I appreciate uh, Preacher, I thank you for coming, for being here. Um, and just, just I, I love all of you guys. And uh, just come back, you know. Study the life of Joseph. And uh, I don't know if anybody told you yet, but there will be a quiz. <laughs> Amen. Let us stand so we can be dismissed. Remember, I forgot this last, last week. What? Um, we had, do have one more announcement, and I'm going to uh, let uh, Minister Dexter, because I don't know when. I don't know. Okay, Deacon Hammonds, uh, give, feed me the information. Christian education classes start this week, is that right? Christian education. Congress school. Where is it going to be? Congress at Friendship at what time? Okay. Ebenezer's praise team or just a Amen. All right. So uh God's grace. Amen. So they'll be there from four to six and then the classes uh Congress uh classes start uh from six to eight and they at friendship and that all uh starts is that all week? All week, amen. Um, all week, next week, and it is paid for. Yeah, you can do virtual or you can go in person. Amen. Amen. Now that you can do either virtual or in person. Amen. I know there are some people who are still kind of, and people are still getting sick, and people are still going away because of COVID. It ain't it ain't left. But so if you if you wanna if you're more comfortable doing it virtually, amen. You can do it virtually. At the New Era District website. At the New Era District website. And they'll have a Zoom ID for you to, is it through Zoom? Yeah, they have everything you have on the, on the uh, New Era District website. Amen? Amen. And I'm sorry, one last thing. Uh, the, the ushers are in the back for your offering. I forgot last week, but you guys are awesome. I mean, you guys always give generously, but um, if you have an offering, make sure you uh, give it to the ushers in the back. They'll have baskets for you on the way out. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Let us bow. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here today, and thank you for the patience and the uh, of your people, Heavenly Father. We ask, Lord, that you that something was said, Lord, that they would be able to grab on a hold to, and that we will be able to practically apply those things that we learned. Heavenly Father, help us to remember, Lord God, that you are God and that your word uh, will never come back to you void but accomplishes what it is that you please, Heavenly Father. Uh, help us to remember that that your son, Jesus Christ, the, the, the incarnate word of God, Heavenly Father, is, is who he says he is, and he gave his life for us, and we can trust in his promises and his word, and we can live, Lord, uh, by the example in which he lived, Lord, thank you for uh, uh, allowing him to die on the cross for our sins and resurrecting him, Heavenly Father, not only showing him that he is your only begotten son, but that he has power over death. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that guides us and corrects us and, and, and moves us, Lord God, as we navigate this life. And Lord, thank you for your word so that we may be able to know more of you, Lord, that we may be able to relate uh, to you as we know of your heart and your mind. Lord, we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would keep those as we go to our various destinations today. And when we get there, Lord, give us a mind uh, to give you thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, for your provision and for your protection. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Way too long.